Okay, it's 6.30, uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll have the pledge and then a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with the financial report. Uh, approve the claims of the number 15223 through 15408 with a total $1,560,504.98. Are there any questions on the claims? Okay, if not, a you know, motion to approve. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. Second. And second by Rick. Any other discussion? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carried 7 0. Uh, payrolls. Everybody have a chance to look through them. There's no questions. A uh, motion to approve payrolls. <coughs> motion. Okay, second. motion by Rick. No second. Second by Stacy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right in. Okay, most carry is 7 0. Okay, funds report. Uh, funds report for March. Um, I added a column on the education and um, operations reports showing the transfer from the education fund to the <coughs> operations fund. So on the education fund in March, we had receipts of $995,387.57. Monthly expenses of $1,050,799.86. We also transferred $276,000 to the education fund and left us with $266,393.28. That service fund um, receipts of $8,201.71. Cash balance is one million nine hundred nine thousand three hundred thirteen dollars and fourteen cents. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of fifteen thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars and nine cents. We transferred the two hundred seventy-six thousand dollars into that account for that fund. Um, we had expenses of three hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred fifty-two dollars and sixty-six cents, which gave us a cash balance or gives us a cash balance of one million eight hundred. Seventy-four thousand three hundred sixty-eight dollars and ninety-eight cents. Any questions? Todd, is that transfer <clears throat> going to be done quarterly, or is that going to be on a monthly basis going I, forward? I kind of well, I, I kind of uh, when we worded the resolution, put it as a, as a year amount. I, I wanted to be. Uh, have some flexibility, not sure how things would roll out as the years go on. So I want to try to get it caught to where we are doing it monthly. So, um, but that, I, that was for basically the first two months of the year. Any other questions? Okay, we'll need a motion to approve the funds report. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Jenny. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7 -0. Okay, under consent items, we have the minutes of the March 11th, 2019 regular board meeting. Any additions or corrections? I had a question about, um, let me find it. It was when we were discussing the claims, yes, under number two, I remember this discussion, but I didn't know if it had to be specific in the minutes which claim number was pulled, if that was something that you'd ever reference again and need to know, or if it was fine to keep it open that there was a check that was pulled. We, yeah, we can go in and then put that, that would number be a good idea. Things. Absolutely. I just thought that was with the board docs. Um, my, that was my recollection that it was the claim on board, board docs. docs. But. Yeah. Could we find out what that was? It was for um, 
a package, the elite package or a premier package that we don't use. We use just the basic and standard and are doing <coughs> fine with that and seems to be functioning well. So we elected not to pay the premium cost up to just has more bells and whistles that I don't believe we would use. Okay, are there any other questions? Then we have the minutes of the April 8th uh, study session. <clears throat> any additions or corrections to that? If not, we'll need a motion to approve the consent items minutes from the March 11th uh, regular board meeting and the April 8th study session. I move that we accept the consent items with that correction on number two for the March 11th, 2019. Okay. Motion made with the correction by Jenny. Second. Second by Joe. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Ready? Okay, motion carried, seven zero. Okay, we're moving to action items. Uh, approval of the Columbia Riddle changes in the student handbook. Jason, do you mind leading through the oh. discussion just as you did previous? I think that there are just two changes that both Columbia and Riddle would be consistent on. And, and yeah, if you, if you go down to the first highlight, I believe it's <clears throat> maybe page, uh, there's the first one. Um, the uh, e-learning days, just a simple explanation to parents about our e-learning days, uh, when we use them, and then the bit about, um, you know, the work, if it's not completed, how that can affect the attendance and getting attendance for that. And then uh, we removed uh, the word custodial from the parental involvement uh, portion of the, the handbook uh, so that it would just read parents of our school children are welcome instead of just custodial parents. So that was the only changes that we are recommending at this time. And that would be for both Columbia? For both Columbia and, and River Okay. Okay, Any questions for Jason? Luke would also like to present the same. Any questions for Luke? <laughs> okay, let's uh, go ahead and combine it with the uh, preschool for the Columbia and Riddle student handbooks. Jen, anything you'd like to share? So last year we had one, just one handbook for our two gen ed preschools and our developmental delay preschool and it was kind of confusing we felt like for parents so this year we just divided those and made two handbooks. So one handbook is for the Little Zebras preschool that's for our two gen ed preschools and then our um, Smart Start preschool is for our developmental delay preschool. So basically, I just divided those out, so they're separate. Um, the times for the developmental delay preschool are gonna change next year. The morning class, uh, which is the three-year-olds, will be 8.15 to 10.45, and the PM class, which is the four-year-olds, will be 12 to 12.30. Um, so that's reflected in the handbook. Drop-off and pickup procedures are just updated for each group. Um, we did put something in there for the, if there's a delay, two hour, three hour delay. And I think we added an attendance procedure. There wasn't any attendance procedure in there based on the, um, for the, for the um, gen ed preschool, that's based on the um, community foundation's attendance policy because several of our students get scholarships from the community foundation. So, any questions? What times did you say for the one to, um, the, the developmental delay preschool? Yeah, for the afternoon. Is um, the afternoon's 12 to 2.30. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll need a motion to approve uh, the Columbia Riddle changes and the uh, approval of the preschool Columbia Riddle student handbooks. I make a motion that we approve all the handbooks. Okay, moved by Stacy. Seconded. And a second by Rick. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, Thank you. 
approval of the terrazzo flooring bid. So part of our bond project money, one of the projects that we had outlined was the um, cleaning of the terrazzo floor at the high school. Um, if you look, there are places where construction has gone through and they've placed tape on those and when you pull it back, you can definitively see the difference of where the wax buildup is, um, some of the dirt and grime that has um, accumulated over many, many years of that terrazzo flooring. So what we're proposing is not only to help restore that terrazzo, but also a cost savings moving forward and that we would do an acid burn taking off those layers of uh, wax that are on the terrazzo, what they would place down would be a sealant which would not require any further um, wax, uh, waxing during the summers, any of the machinery that, that sometimes breaks down and is becoming antiquated, but would have that sealant on it. And uh, anybody at the high school, if you look where that tape has been pulled, you can see the distinct difference in the, in the flooring. So it will help with the preservation of that and also um, will save not only um, chemicals, but also manpower and time moving forward. And that was part of one of those projects we'd outlined. We actually uh, put it out to bid on a very restricted time frame. The bids came in much higher than we had projected, so we sent it out uh, for rebid with a longer time frame. Um, it'll actually span two summers uh, as we're working on other flooring and projects within that building, and that brought it down uh, to where it fit within what we had budgeted for. So my um, recommendation would be to go with Art Mosaic and Tile the $297,000 bid, and again, that will span two summers worth of time, and we'll do all of the terrazzo at the high school. Okay. Any questions? We had an opportunity at the study session to look at the floor over there, and you can tell there was some differences there where the tape was. You don't, the, you don't realize until you start looking, yeah, but it'll be a huge surprising. difference, and it'll save a lot of time money finances moving forward as well. Okay, so we have a bid uh, from Art Mosaic Tile Company of $297,000. A motion to approve that bid. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Joe. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries seven to Approval of auction surplus uh, RHS choir practice room equipment. So this is one of those, and I'm going to lean um, on Scott as well as he's trying to head this up. Um, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we brought a comprehensive list to the board. Some of those items were sold at an auction when we have the Harrison property um, auction. And just as a side note, the cleanup on that begins on Monday. Uh, the further cleaning of the brush and piles. But in that, we had several items that were sold at auction, others that at that time we had asked to be scrapped or recycled. These are those leftover components, and so what we are proposing is that uh, from that original list, we go back, we try one last time to auction those um, items listed at the top <coughs> and to scrap and destroy those two items at the bottom that we know uh, have no resale value at all and then would like the board's permission if these don't sell after the public auction to go ahead and to either donate if we can some, find somebody willing to take the, the items or um, destroy. Okay. Jason, did you find anybody that wanted a piano? Any of the kindergarten <coughs> teachers? No, ma'am. <laughs> no takers at all? Negative. <laughs> right. I didn't realize we had so many pianos. I mean, <clears throat> Where are they hiding? <laughs> we actually had somebody try to donate one again this, this last week, and we're very appreciative of those donations that just comes a time when we can't mm -hmm. um, store all of those, and I think with some music teachers here. When yeah. I came in 1990, those pianos were here. <laughs> and they were bad then. So. <laughs> so everything's electronic keyboard now. Yep. There's a key stick. <laughs> okay, yeah, you have. Uh, that's yeah. true, too. Any other questions on the, uh, the choir room uh, practice uh, room equipment? We'll have some that's auctioned, and then what doesn't sell, scrap and destroy. So we need a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, motion by Rick. I'll second. Second, Kyle. Any other discussion? 
One paper. Okay, let's look at the seven mirrors. Approval of proposed speech and language pathologist contract. Jim, do you mind providing an update as to where we are with SLPs, which are sure. few and far between in the state, and I, be they, I believe that we're blessed and that we are going to have person-to-person, -person, face to face contact within our district where many school districts are having to go over our live stream and working with somebody through uh, computers and, and screens. So blessed that Jen has worked so hard to locate some of those people to bring into our district. So right now we have three full-time SLPs, as you probably know. One is on a teacher contract and two are contracted since we couldn't find any SLPs last year. So we posted two of the jobs. Um, and we got one applicant, which was Alicia Helt, so that's coming up later. So the other applicant, or the other uh, SLP that we hired first, I gave her the option to stay, and she agreed to stay. So this is through that contract company. It's the same company, uh, the same five days a week. Um, she did start four days after the school year started, so the previous contract uh, reflects that. So this contract is just 185 days, and this year we were able to get her for seven and a half hours a day instead of seven, which we had last year, which is actually the full day. So, any questions? We've been very happy with both, I think, Mr. Snyder and uh, Mr. Hawes would agree. We've been happy with both SLPs that we've contracted. So. Especially finding some as hard as they are to find. And yes. And to find good ones, too. Anybody have any questions? No. Are, the terms, I'm sorry. Go ahead, are the terms of the contract the same, except what well, you've mentioned, the half an hour more a day, or more days because she started after the school year, but the rate the same? The rate is the same for this year, yes. Okay. Any other question? Any motion to approve the uh, speech and language pathologist contract? So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. I'll second. Second by Stacy. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor? <coughs> okay, motion carried 7 0. Thank you. Approval of the Riddle Music Adoption. I believe that Ms. Weaver is going to lead us through this process. <coughs> Talk to the board about that. Sure. Um, last year was actually the year that um, adoption was uh, for the um, music department, and we uh, decided to delay that a year because we had only two music teachers at the corporation at that time, and knew we'd be hiring the third one and wanted her to be part of that. Uh, middle school and high school, they don't use a set curriculum because their fees come, they're, they buy music uh, basically with theirs and equipment and things that they need. The elementary is different. And um, uh, five years ago, we had the opportunity to um, try do a demonstration period of a new program that is online that is called uh, Quaver. If, uh, if you look at online, it's the wonderful world of Quaver and it's based out of Nashville, Tennessee. And what we found that that did for our music department is that it um, really increased the rigor of uh, the music instruction that we have. And it also um, increased the um, it, it, the amount of um, time that the kids would be attentive. It, they, it was so student active, and um, it, in, was, is, it is all web-based, and uh, it includes all of our music and um, resources that we need. So it eliminated the need for purchasing um, new books for us to have, which um, I know that when Lisa McMillan was in the elementary, she probably used the books more than what I did. 
but I also have the younger elementary, which um, it just didn't really serve their needs. And um, so after using that for a while, and then bringing in a, a new teacher, we have looked at what is out there for adoption um, and really feel like Quaver Music is the route that we need to stay on because um, it has become a worldwide program now. I've actually, when I introduced a new song to my students that um, was from a small island north of Australia, was able to um, talk to a music teacher in Australia that also used Quaver Music and she was able to tell me about this island in the Torrey Strait so that I could relay that to my students and have real current information on that. And um, the being, being based um, on the internet, uh, they also have backups so that if something happens with our internet, we're covered. We can still deliver our um, curriculum for that day. They're very supportive. If we have problems with it, they're there to help. They also listen to the teachers and that if there's something that we um, like better, that would think that would make a lesson better, they will listen and make improvements. Every three months we have new songs, new um, ideas that are rolled <coughs> out. And one of the big things that um, they have been working on with um, in Quaver Music this year is trying to um, do character education through music. And so a lot of the, the new songs that we're seeing are building in character education. Um, the, I don't know how many of you have had access to the actual letter that was written up, but um, because of, of the success that we've seen in our music department over the last several years when we were using Quaver, it also is more economical because it's a subscription fee rather than buying books. And a lot of times they have CDs that go along with it so that you have access to the music that you have to purchase. And they also would have big books and um, all of the supplemental things that come with it. We just feel like Quaver is not only best for our students, but also more, the most economic uh, program for um, our school system at this time. So um, in working with this, uh, Kyle was brought on board with this. We had a couple of teachers that have worked on this and then our administrators. And with that, we would recommend that we would um, adopt Quaver music as our elementary music curriculum. And um, I'm not sure what else I need to say. Okay. So is that... Um 7350 that's for the whole five years? Yeah, that's a subscription so cost. So it's not for just each years. year. It's and we still have one year of our initial agreement that we went into. So, um, yeah, that year's, that, that cost is covered. So in a way, in, a, in essence, we have six years that it would take us through. So it's basically like a digital library of music with topics you can zero in on? Um, it is a curriculum in that uh, they work with the states and looking at their, um, their core values, that they're, their standards that they have in music and in other areas because it is cross-curricular in a lot of ways. And um, they develop lessons that um, follow along those standards. And um, this year happens to be the year that they are, because Indiana has um, new standards that have come out since Quaver First was written. So they're in the process of, of aligning all of those standards and making sure that, that it still does align to Indiana music standards. And there are lessons that are developed that you could just go in and say, I want to teach meter to my first graders. And so I would go and choose a lesson on meter. Basically, it's divided up into three lessons. First one would introduce, the second one practice, the third one reviews and assesses. But as a teacher, I can go in and I can create my own lessons on meter and pull things that work best for me from those lessons that they've already developed. And um, 
I personally have a whole list of lessons that I have developed, and then I could share those lessons or look at other lessons that teachers around have done and see, because if I have something that didn't work, what did I do wrong? And then there's other teachers out there that say, hey, do it this way, this is what worked for me. And so it's, it's, you've got your choice. You can either use what's already there or you can create your own lessons. But then there also is the music that supports that as well. And so um, doing kindergarten concert, again, tomorrow night, <coughs> six o'clock at Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> One of the songs that we use is called Stinky Pirates. Um, I use that to teach a meter of two and mark the marching meter. And um, yet um, we also pulled that in to talk about health issues and then the importance of keeping clean as far as staying healthy. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of things that you pull in with it. All of that music was available to me, even a soundtrack so that I could use it in concert form and not have their voices with it. So I, it's, it's the most all-inclusive curriculum we've seen out there. It's, it is a full curriculum. It's not just a library of music and resources that the teacher has to go through. And it's certainly not, I've been in the music classroom quite a bit, and uh, um, it, is, it is not a, uh, being web-based, it's not just a kids come in, she turns it on, and then 40 minutes of um, quaver teaching the kids. Um, there, there are bits and pieces, the, the full lessons involve the teacher, the teacher is involved the entire time. Um, there's just resources that are available for whatever it is that they're teaching, uh, and, and they use it really well. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a lot different than any other music curriculum in terms of uh, the materials, as far as the, like you said, it's all standards based, it's just, um, it's all online and available. And then we've also utilized it for uh, e-learning days um, and it's been very successful there as well, and I've even, you know, I've, I've worked on it with my daughters, um, and, and they've had uh, the music e-learning days, and, and it was very uh, engaging and productive for them as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a full-out curriculum. It's good. It's a good program. What we've been able to do through the tech department is put a shortcut um, to their website on all the kids' iPads. So it, they're just a click of, and logging on they're just a click away from having what they need to follow along. Anybody else have questions? Jill, you mentioned for kindergarten, do you, is that where you pull for most of your concerts or do you sometimes use different things? It, it depends on what the, for me personally, I try to follow along with what the curriculum they're doing in their um, grade, at their grade level. So third grade, they talk about um, oceans and continents. So in third grade, I do music around the world. But I pull a lot of my music from their class play list in, because they do a lot of international songs. So it allows us to do that. Um, last year, they introduced preschool curriculum. So um, it's been exciting to um, use that with the, the little ones. And um, they, they nail it as far as how do you approach those younger kids? Because you can't do a full out, just lesson from beginning to end. You have to break it up, break it up, break it up, break it up. And that's what you do. You do a song. Oh, hey, we're gonna do this story. Hey, boys and girls, let's stand up because they're gonna circle around and we're gonna, and it, so it's just constantly, um, it, it's just, even the activities they have are just so right on to the, the students. <coughs> And not all the concerts are, are based off of the, the, that curriculum, like uh, the uh, second grade concert with, yeah. uh, is focused on uh, weather, which they're learning about in second grade, so it's cross-curricular, but in terms of actually coming from Quavar, you guys actually create your own, they create their own songs with, I mean the kids, each class writes their own songs, so you know, Quavar does their, I can call it play bar, play bar. It doesn't. It, it doesn't provide that necessarily because they're they're creating their own music. So there's a little bit of everything. Yeah, the there really is. But and even when we use something like that, Quaver teaches how to compose music. And um, in middle school and high school, they use GarageBand. 
Quaver has their own version that is geared to the younger kids of Garage Band, and so it you know the ways to make help them create their own music is is there as well. But yeah, it, there we have to go out and use our own resources for different things. It's you know that's part of teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Any other questions? Thank you, Jill. Good job explaining it. And come and watch our classes sometimes. We just have a ball in there. Third grade are doing recorders right now. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, uh, we need a motion to approve the uh, waiver curriculum <laughs> for the uh, uh, rental music adoption. I move to approve. Okay, motion by Kyle. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any motion carries? Seven zero. Okay. Moving on to donations. <coughs> okay. We have. Uh, <coughs> Grace United Methodist Church Mission Team, $500 to Riddles Students One Book One School. Rochester Telephone Company, labor and equipment for construction of baseball batting cage. Alton Rosary Society, St. Joseph Church, $300 for Columbia Riddle Middle Backpacks. House of Decor, paint for Columbia Teachers Lounge Makeover. Travis Ramsey, tile and labor for Columbia Teachers Lounge Makeover. Trula Amick, $100 to JAG. Cy Iazota, Cy Sorority, $300 for Riddle School. Laura Ricketts, clothing items for RMS students in need. And Lions Club, $200, Riddle's one book, one school. Were there any other additions? I always look at candy as yeah, well. Yeah, I was looking at no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any questions about those? Now we need a motion to approve the donations. So moved. A motion by Sandy. Second. Second by Jenny. Oh. Any other discussion? All in favor. Ready? Sure. A motion carries. Up here. <coughs> Once again, as always, we uh, thank the donations. Uh, every dollar helps. And uh, you know, as you see, there's a lot of different things covered here. And every area can use the help. So really appreciate the community. Okay, next item, the field trip senior class graduation celebration. Mr. Kiesling, if you'd like to share. Yes. Um, senior classes, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to go to uh, Cedar Point this year. I'd like to commend the board for the extra two days on the end of the school year. It's <laughs> tucked in nice and neatly right in there on that Tuesday after we get back on that long weekend. So that worked out just perfectly for the seniors. Uh, they originally had it planned a little earlier. We saw that date and we said, that's where it needs to go, right there. <laughs> so uh, they are going to see, uh, Cedar Point uh, uh, sponsor uh, Mr. Stasiak. And um, I believe right now we've got 60 or a little more than that that are going to be able to go. Uh, be able to pay their way, but any overages would be handled through the uh, senior class account. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a day trip, not an overnighter. So. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Sounds like fun. Is the 60 I'm, due to like people not interested or have other things they're doing? I mean, that's about half the class, I would think. That time of year, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. And I that was the last count. I think they they're continuing to increase a little bit. But that was the last count. We've got a little more time than we otherwise would have had before the date of the actual trip. Um, but you can always count. 10 to 15 kids are coming in late with stuff. So I would imagine you'd probably add about that amount to it. <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions? So for good weather, too. Yeah. As far as uh, um, uh, teachers and, and those that are going, I, I always uh, am on standby. 
Uh, if they need, need me to go, I always step in and go. But uh, I'm also helping man the ship there at school uh, during those days as we wind up school. I tend to hate to leave school during that time just to make sure that uh, everything's going smoothly. But uh, uh, it's also fun to go on those trips as I've done in the past. I've been to Cedar Point several times as, a, as an administrator with seniors, so it's always fun. So. I'm assuming, I, I don't know, like I said, I didn't see on there. We're taking school buses, not like yeah. charter buses yeah. or anything. Right. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Can okay, each uh, motion to approve the uh, senior class trip? So moved. Okay, second. No second. Okay. Second agenda. All in favor? Okay, motion to carry. <coughs> Okay, now we have uh, RCTA request for recognition, extend invitation. I'm not sure who I'm from, but who I'm first. Somebody want to speak? You just want me to kind of explain yeah. how you're walking this? Okay. <clears throat> so RCTA is um, with our Unit 7, whatever you want to call it. Um, all the schools in Unit 7, I think it's either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Mm -hmm. Um, this week are going to do walk-ins and it's just a way of getting the public and, and people who really aren't maybe looking at the problems we're having with education and funding um, to kind of get that word out and draw some attention to that um, and all a walk-in is hope made a couple notes for me uh, 730 to 745 uh, where the parent drop-offs are or student drop-offs I should say um, for each school, teachers will meet uh, in those areas, and school board, uh, anybody in the public, um, students, any employee, they're welcome to come join. And I mean, essentially, all we're going to do is just be and walk into school. So I think everybody's going to wear red. Um, Hope and Leah kind of have been more in tune with the walk-ins than I have. Um, am I forgetting anything, Hope? think so. We'll have signs and probably some really cool chants. <laughs> Hope we'll have some good chants. Yeah. Course, I'm sure. <laughs> My daughter's Abbey School had their walk in last week and they had the media there and she made the front page of the career journal. <laughs> They had a good, good response. Mm -hmm. And then along that line, something um, not exactly related, but along the same line, um, a lot of um, local units, associations, are asking their boards to adopt a resolution <clears throat> that, um, well, because we're all in this together, right? We need more funding for education. I just saw on Twitter before I came over here, um, they're tweaking that um, funding bill, and they just passed a new level of voucher where they would fund 70% of a student's um, tuition, take a, you know 70% of the cost and send that. So they're expanding the voucher program instead of reeling it back in. There were three um, amendments proposed. Those were all defeated by vo vo voice votes. Um, and so you know we're down to the last two weeks of the session. And we're trying to really get their attention that schools, especially like ours, you know that 2% is not 2% for us, as you know. We look to lose funding in every, uh, both uh, proposals that have been in the House and the Senate. So we feel responsible for leading the charge and just saying, look, we need more funding for education. It's not just about teacher pay. It's not just about um, you know, benefits and all those things that go with employees. It's about funding education for our kids. So I think, do they have copies of the resolution? Um, so it basically just says, whereas the governing body of Rochester Community School Corporation of Fulton County, Rochester, Indiana, as a political subdivision of the state of Indiana, is charged with providing a free and appropriate public education for all students enrolled in the school district, whereas the economic, cultural, and social future of Indiana is largely dependent upon the assurance of educational opportunity for its youngest citizens. Whereas the promise of any future requires sound, deliberate, and persistent investment in the present. Whereas a strong and vital public education system attracts and builds economic investment and development benefiting all. 
whereas Indiana's national rankings on school, public school funding and teacher compensation have seen marked declines over the last decade, impacting Indiana's ability to attract and retain educational professionals upon whom we and our children depend. Whereas our own school district stands to lose funding each of the next two years under the current budget proposals. Whereas the people of this school district and this state, and more importantly, the public school children of this state, deserve a future that includes increased opportunities coupled with the reversal of the trends described herein. Whereas under the Indiana Constitution and other statutes, the Indiana General Assembly and the governor are both authorized and empowered to ensure that the state's <coughs> public school system is adequately funded and resourced. Whereas no one has sacrificed more to ensure our public school children receive a quality public education despite insufficient funding and resources, not of their making, than our public school teachers and school employees. And whereas the Rochester School Board believes that our entire community, including parents, families, caregivers, business leaders, teachers, support professionals, school district administrators, neighbors and friends support our educators as they participate in legally permitted activities, including hashtag red for ed, to support funding needed to educate our children and secure Indiana's future. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing body of the Rochester School Corporation supports our educators and stands ready to take steps necessary to improve salaries and working conditions for our district employees. Be it further resolved that the governing body supports our school employees as they engage in legal activities that clearly make known their demands concerning necessary funding for meaningful teacher and support staff raises and increased educational funding. Be it further resolved that the governing body supports the First Amendment rights of its employees. Be it further resolved the governing body urges the Indiana General Assembly and Governor to work urgently on behalf of the children and families in our state to take swift and meaningful action to pay teachers and support staff increased professional salaries. Passed and adopted by the governing body of the Rochester School Corporation this 15th of <coughs> April, 2019. So basically, um, it's a lot of fancy words to say, we'd like to show the community that we're all in the Red for Ed movement together and that we all believe that we need increased funding for all those things that we mentioned. Um, you read all, you know all the facts. You guys are the ones that deal with the numbers. Um, but we hope that you'll support us. We invite you to the walk-in or, you know, wherever you're working, wear red and tell people, hey, I'm wearing red today for education. So we would love to have you adopt this and join us on Thursday morning. Is that this Thursday? This Thursday, yeah. At all four buildings? No, at each building, yeah. Okay. Um, we just received this, you know, around noon or so today, yeah. and a lot of us didn't get a chance to digest it very well. Uh, board members, do you have any questions? And you like? Uh, I don't, yeah. Um, I, I don't mind publicly stating I, I will absolutely always support a teacher. I'm married to one. I prefer to go home and have a place to live. Um, with that being said, I did read through this, um, and I have some questions regarding who drafted this up. Okay. Um, I assume <clears throat> there's some wording in here that I, I had trouble trying to understand. And, and, the, and the first part of now, therefore, it be resolved, it talks about working conditions. And I, and I would like to understand, I, I want to make sure there's no Where disconnect here. Um, in the top, it says, uh, stands ready to take steps necessary to improve salaries and working conditions. I would like to know, do we have working conditions that are not being met for our teachers or any part of our staff? Um, I think what we're just talking about is, general. I mean, basically, it really is class size. Um, Maybe it should have said that. This is something that we got from ISTA and adopted for us, but I, the association has no major uh, complaints about working conditions. Okay. And then under legal activities, um, within the second paragraph, mm -hmm. that's not defined. And before I, I mean, before I would sign anything or put my name on something, because this obviously. <coughs> We, we've heard the talk about walkouts and this and that. Well, that would be illegal. 
Uh, correct, <laughs> but what do you define or what does the union define as legal activities? Because it's not defined in the paper. As long as we are uh, fulfilling our contract, our contractual obligations. Okay. Those are the questions I had, thank you. So will it be wrapped up by 7.45? Oh yeah, so we, we, have have we gotta be in the building. In our rooms by right, 7.45. Right, because that's contract time. Yep, oh yeah. I, I have no problem publicly telling you that I support you again. That's on record. I absolutely support you. I don't feel comfortable signing a paper. Um, I think being given that we got it at noon today, thrown at us, I would love to be able to sit down, have a discussion. You have my full, I can't speak on behalf of the board, I can speak for myself. You've got my all out whatever you need to, to walk in, demonstrate. You guys deserve to be paid like professionals. I said that when I debated to get this job. I will say that now. You need to be paid like professionals. There's no doubt in my mind. If I had a magical wand to create more money for you all, there ain't no doubt I would do that. Um, I think you've been attacked from every angle possible at the state, at the state legislative, the way, they're, the way they come at educators. It's wrong. The voucher system's wrong. Um, there's just a lot wrong. So. You guys do whatever you need to do, by all means, to, to help yourself out. It's a shame that you have to go to that level, but, but I can't sign a piece of paper. I'm sorry. Not yet. Well, I apologize for the lateness, but the, um, the walk-in and all that was just organized at the end of the week because we've been trying to give the legislature time to do something. Do something. And when the, um, I don't, was it the Senate that just came out of the House? The Senate. Um, you know, everybody decided we have to show them that we're serious because we were told this fall the legislators don't think we care enough <coughs> to make a difference. So, you know, we've decided we have to stand up and say, hey, this matters. We don't want teachers working two jobs. We don't want teachers qualifying for free or reduced lunch. You guys know all this. We'd love to tell you. That's all we're trying to do is bring attention and try to make a difference. Yeah, I, you're not going to find a more pro teacher board. Oh, I, mean, I know. As you know, you have four spouses here. Sure. You have the mother of a teacher, you have a teacher. And Rick's always on board for, <laughs> for the right cause. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, uh, like Kyle says, if we, is, there, is this time sensitive? I mean, we have two weeks until the legislation wraps up. So we'd have a couple weeks to digest this better? I mean, to be fair to... They'll, they'll just be out of session at that point. So it's, uh, I don't know if it's two weeks. And the walk-ins will be over. So. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think anybody has a problem on the board with the walk-in, as long as meets contract. I mean, you're, that's your own time before school. I appreciate what you've done to this point as well. I appreciate the articles in the paper. I appreciate the social media presence. Um, our, we just like <clears throat> the teachers have an association, the school board has an association, and the people that are our lobbyists are working very closely with ISCA's lobbyists, because you're right, it's all um, mixed in together, all in this move from public education. I appreciate how you're drawing attention to Dr. McCormick and her frustrations, and she's being very outspoken and is an advocate for us. Um, I'm sure you've been in contact with our local people, with Jack Jordan, with Randy Head. Um, they encounter a lot of resistance mm -hmm. at the state level, but they have been people who've been um, in contact with us too, so we appreciate that, and, I, and you're getting your message out that way. You know, you know I think our administrators, uh, and the corporation has tried as hard as we can to, to give what we can. And, and some of that's working through uh, insurance and any funding possible that maybe through stipends or stuff. That, but yeah, it, it, as I've said, it comes down to getting the funds to start with. And yeah, it isn't fair. I mean, even within school districts uh, where Abby teaches, the top of the scale there is like $15,000 higher than it is here. So there's imbalance in that respect too. Of course, the bigger schools maybe, you know, more fluent areas too. It seems like that's the problem. The, the bigger cities, the more fluent areas, getting more of the funding, out of proportion funding. 
It's the way I see it. So it, we got to keep on the legislators. Um, yeah, I think the board definitely supports you. Uh, if we could have some time to digest the resolution a little better. Um, what what would be a more appropriate time frame? I mean, instead of two weeks, I mean, you like in a week if we got back to you on the resolution. Is that I mean, we just thought it would be a chance for us all to show kind of a united front. So I mean, I think whenever that happens, it's just an opportunity. Legally, we just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Sure. You know, there's things we have to watch out for too. So it's not because we don't support you. I mean, don't take it that way. Uh, what, what are the concerns to digest it? Well, we had some uh, about uh, some of the wording. And some of the members uh, just want to, you know, like I said, we got it noon or so, and then some of them didn't get it till they got home from work to read through it, so. I, as I look at it, I don't see any big concerns myself, but if board members have concerns, you know, we have to make sure everybody's satisfied with the decision they're gonna make. I, I just, me personally, I don't, I don't think that, I mean, we, we were, we're all here hearing what you're saying, but I think your reluctance, I think your reluctance to sign it, I think that sends a message that some people won't understand. Well, we've given a reason why tonight, wouldn't this, I mean, we can bring it up the, we can still bring up the vote, but I want to make sure we got the vote we want. I hope you understand that too. I do, I mean, you just have to understand, you know, that works. To, sorry. I guess, Clint, what my, under question, my question is, what's the difference between a public, me telling you that you have support from me, I, I don't know about the rest, but from me, or signing a piece of paper, what's the difference? Because we're not asking you to give us a public, this is the public, sign it, it is the public recognition. Right, but I think, in, in our opinion. Yeah, correct, but I also think in respect to us, it's unfair to spring this at noon, right before a meeting where I, I work during the day as well, and I, had, I, I briefly got to review it. I get home. I, I don't have much time, I mean, to go through it. You know, as a board, we work as one, and I just think it's, you know, if you'd have got this to us last week, I, don't, I probably wouldn't have had a problem. We probably had time to digest it. But to, to spring it on us today and ask us to sign it today is, is too much. I just, I, I, tr again, I'm, I'm pro teacher. I can't be any, I can't say it anymore. I, I am all for educators <coughs> and getting whatever they can. My, I mean. Why was the late date, why was it held till today that we received it? Could have been gotten to us earlier? Uh, we, we, didn't, didn't, we didn't get the information until the weekend and then we had to meet together and, you know, fine tune it, make sure it was okay with everybody. And, you know, so I mean, I guess we could have had it yesterday. If, we had gotten together over the weekend, but like I said, we um, we didn't get our walk-in organized until uh, Thursday and Friday. So I mean, actually, we should just all be blaming the state of Indiana and the legislatures. I mean, that's what this is about. This isn't our fault. It's not our problem. It's not your fault. It's not your problem. This is all about the people in the state of Indiana who are running our government. That's the bottom line. They're the ones who are forcing us to be a little difficult and ask you know ask for public support and sign things and that you guys it's sad that you guys have to say hey we support teachers you shouldn't have to say that you should live in a state where the people who run it say we're going to give you school board enough money to run the programs and pay the people a fair wage and, and run the school to the best of your ability but they're not doing that i too so, i go to the support i also would i'm trying to hear what you're saying so you're asking us to make a decision that we've only had a couple hours and no discussion and something that you received from the state and had hours and discussion making sure it was correct you're asking us to not have that same time and rule on this is that what I'm hearing I think we're fine waiting. yeah I mean we're, we're just giving you the opportunity based on the information we had at the time we're not demanding anything obviously it's just a piece of paper 
we're just asking. So if that's not, I mean, you know, that's up to you guys whether that's something you want to do today or give them time to read another it. time. Sure, we get it absolutely. Is signing this costing us anything? I could ask Ted Parr's legal perspective on this. Uh, it's more than a piece of paper, right? Well, it's a resolution, which is a sense of the board. Um, part of what Hope says is there is an effort here to put pressure on legislators, whether the board as a body, you know, a, a uh, separate political body created by the Indiana legislature wants to do that. That's that's a separate question than do you want to support teachers. It is a resolution. Uh, I don't suspect that there would be any uh, reverberations or kickback as a result of this, but you never know. I, we've seen politicians do that with uh, actually some regularity over the last few years. Uh, you know, somebody says something, somebody else kicks them in the teeth. Um, but as a resolution, it, it is not a commitment that you're going to uh, read what minimal treasury the, count, the, the school corporation has to provide benefits. You're simply joining in the demand for more from the state. So, uh, but it, it is a resolution. It's not an ordinance. It's not a policy statement. It's, it's simply a statement of the sense of the board. Thank you. Any more questions? Would a Thursday or would Thursday or Friday of this week be enough time? Since our walk ins on Thursday? Everybody think? Uh, yeah, I I'm good with that. Good as long with as that? we have enough no. time to to advertise another meeting. Right, you have to call it call a meeting, have forty eight hours notice of the call of the meeting so they couldn't do it before Thursday, some sometime during the day Thursday. If we want some wording removed out of this resolution, who, who do we go to for that? It's your resolution. You can re, re you can rewrite re it. it. It's your okay. resolution. Okay. That that. Okay, the, we don't need permission. No, you don't need permission okay. from I them. So. They, I they may not like the resolution you come up with, but it's your resolution. Oh, I think it reads. I'll be honest. I think it reads fine. Most of it. There's just a couple things in there that I would like taken out. Right. Yeah, that doesn't that, that hopes that doesn't apply and to to Rochester and that's working conditions. Okay. I think um, that should something similar come up in the future, the best course of action, which and not always do we have the best um, opportunities given time constraints, but it would be great to come together to form the resolution together, and I think that is probably what some of the um, a little bit of the resistance is, is that instead of collaboratively coming up with resolution, it was your sign the resolution. But uh, I think the spirit of the resolution, everyone agrees with. So do you, do you want me to try to schedule a meeting for? Mm -hmm. So the earliest would be Thursday, <coughs> which will be after the. I it could be in conjunction with their, I couldn't be at their walk, but it could be on, the, if this, the walk-in is a public show, it is a, it is to engage the media, it is to generate support and awareness, that seems like a perfect time to have a resolution would be on that day, even if it's not exactly at that time. I think it have it signed before that walk. Well, we would have to meet we, we have to meet, have since we have all of us, enough days that, we have to have enough days in between yeah. to advertise it. <clears throat> and so it, we don't have a, we you can't have get it in to advertise before 7.30 tomorrow morning, probably, so. Well, you, it's 48 hours from the time you give notice. And Tyra's here. Tyra's here. Yeah, tell her. Uh, <laughs> tell her <laughs> here. Tom's probably here. Tomorrow, it's but if you, want, if you want to have a scheduled meeting at 8 a.m., you can do that, uh, have the board meet at that time. It would be after the walk-in, but it would be about as early as you could realistically do that. But then you also want to 
retain the time to have the conversation you want to talk about and maybe to redraft the resolution if that's part of the mm -hmm. proposal. So, you know, you, I would anticipate you would want to schedule at least an hour starting at 8 if they're comfortable with the resolution coming out <coughs> an hour and a half after they're done with the walk-in. That, that's about as good as you can do right now, unless you want to meet at 9.30 Wednesday night. But I don't think that's the will of the board. Uh, board, need time to meet and make adjustments to the resolution? Is that your thoughts? Or? I think adjustments are needed, yes. And then I would love to sign it. I would like for you to be at our school's visible. Line. I've already been forewarned. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> if we have questions, who should we contact? You can contact me or Glenn. Okay. It's one of the things you need to know. We're very comfortable in front of kids and, you know, interacting and re reacting and, and teaching children. We're fish out of water when it comes to this type of thing. But yet, especially, I think you'll find that some of your more seasoned teachers are just really, really concerned about this. Because as you know, we're losing good quality people. And it's just not teachers, it's IAs and on down the, the line that we're losing. And Ultimately, it's the kids that suffer the most. So we're really here for the kids. But we're not perfect in our approach how to do this because this isn't our expertise at all. You shouldn't have to be in, put in this position. That's correct. That's right. mean, if things were done right, that is correct. So, yeah, you know, I don't blame you for anything. That. That's for sure. That's, that's not your job. They have to do this, but sometimes you do. So, um, so we're looking at uh, Thursday morning, nine o'clock. That work in on the time. Thursday nine. Or thurs Thursday morning. What? Yeah, whatever time you want to skip. Is that what you're saying? You you call you can call the meeting, but do you want to have a motion to table this until that meeting? Yeah, we'll have specific to do that, time. Right. We want to make sure we've got something lined up here. Then mm -hmm. will that work? Or I mean, <coughs> Joe, you probably won't work for me. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Thursday at 9, Chris and I are supposed to be at a superintendent study council in regards to graduation pathways that is presented by the IDOE from 9 to 1. That's probably something you can put on the resolution. It's probably something, I mean, we always love to have you around, but. No, this I understand. It's a point of doing it. It's a point of doing it. It's a point of I can rearrange. I have some but I can rearrange it. That work, Corey? Sandy? Yeah, that's right. Thursday at 9. I may have to bring Naomi then. No, it's all right. <laughs> Thursday at 9. Th yeah. That's what we're kind of. At the admin building? Okay. Yep. Thursday at 9 a.m. Well, there's yeah, a. We really appreciate you guys changing your schedules around to do that. Yeah. Thing. Is that. You uh, should have to do it. In unison with them, will they be with us? I mean, I, I look at this as one team. Mm -hmm. okay. If we're going to draft a resolution, I would like Absolutely. to draft it with. We want to make it work. I mean, we want everybody to be on board, like what Jenny said. If we kind of feel like you guys got to draft it, which is fine, and brought it to us, I, if we all draft it together, that's a unification statement to me. So, or a unified statement, sorry. Would you be able to have a representative, mm -hmm. at least one? Uh, yeah, we, we can work it out. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Is it Thursday at nine? I could come. Okay. Well, just I guess we'll get with Jana and just let them know who's coming, and we can. Okay. Uh, Jana Jana's will not be able to attend, but okay, it's just one item that the board can. That's fine. Yep. Yep. We'll try to find somebody else who has a prep period then, or I might be a little late, but I I have a I have some length of time. It's passing time to time to this. <coughs>
Can I assume you'll be here? That building. That building. That building. Yeah, as you can see, you know, the board's taking this serious. And yeah. We just want to make sure we do it right. And we're, you know, we're trying to adjust our schedules so we can Thank get it done you. as quickly as possible. So. Okay. so with that, I'll need a motion to, to table um, this until... Good motion to table. Okay, motion by Kyle, <coughs> second. Second by Rick. All in favor? Okay. Thank you for coming in and explaining everything. Appreciate it. I have one question. Okay. Is someone bringing donuts? I'll <laughs> 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 make sure he gets. <laughs> Kyle, that's what Kyle said. He's always in the. I typically on donut duty. It doesn't ever make it, but I bring it. <laughs> well, it is Monday, Thursday. It's the day of the last supper. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fish. I don't want to wash anybody's feet. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> you get a fish donut. A <laughs> fish donut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Personnel report, uh, hiring Alicia Hill, speech language pathologist for 2019-20 school year, pay rate 55,000 annual. Uh, Joanne Smith, instructional assistant, Riddle, pay rate $8.61. Jesse Powell, food service assistant at high pay rate $9. <coughs> Patricia Elliott, food service assistant, Riddle, pay rate $9.94. Uh, maternity leave, uh, Marnie Meunier, uh, Middle School Special Education, Kristen Contreras, Columbia, Grade 1, FMLA, uh, Melissa Usley Belpedio, Columbia Instructional Assistant, Amber Reinhold, Columbia Treasurer, Intermittent Leave, Near Session Change, Allison Butler, Substitute for Kenzie Collins for two days, due to death in the family. Summer reading program, Leslie Strim, Kylie Dague, Amy Banks, Amy Freedom, Freeman, uh, Nikki Obermeyer. Summer intercession, Leslie Strim Riddle, Mona Zion Riddle, and Angie Smith Riddle. Are there any additions to that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Anybody have any questions? That can't be summer intercession. Is that before Columbia's intercession? I know, I was the first. Oh, wow. Wow. Just looking at that. It's Columbia. Where is Columbia? He beat you. Good. I got it. I'll be the ball with it. Have a dish of steak? Somebody's wandering around here. Any questions on any of those? If not, the motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. And a second by Stacy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries seven zero. Okay. Approval of the employment agreement. So the employment agreement that you see um, is for Victoria Zellers and it's an effort to us, uh, for us to comply with um, the audit that we just went through. Victoria's job description as outlined is more of a salary position rather than an hourly position. Right now we are paying her hourly, which means many of those details that within her job description we should be paying overtime for. And that wasn't part of the agreement and um, the auditors when they came in wants to see that in an agreement form which would be this uh, contract that Mr. Wagner helped us generate um, and what you're seeing is a reflection of what she currently makes so it's not adding to or taking away from her salary it's making that agreement within a contractual form so that we're in compliance with what the auditors are looking for as far as salary versus hourly employees and their job description. Do you have any questions? I had a couple. On number one, it says 
um, employer hereby employs employee in the capacity of position hired. Should that say head nurse or is, okay, so that needs to be fixed. Okay. And then in number three, um, do we have performance bonuses? No. Yes. We do? Performance you know, teacher get the teacher the appreciation grants and administrators oftentimes get the same thing. Okay, so she, Victoria would be would, eligible for that? She would not be eligible for that. <clears throat> well, that would be a case, determined on a case by case basis. This creates the eligibility, this form contracts for any uh, administrator who's not carrying a, a teaching, teaching license. license. Okay, so I, if, <clears throat> it's at your discretion whether we leave that in. But that, thank you. Any, any other questions on that? That would be a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve with the changes that we made with the position of. Okay. Motion by Stacy to approve with the uh, changes noted. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carries in here. <clears throat> okay, uh, superintendent business. I just want to thank everybody, especially teachers and support staff as they're here um, this evening for those open, honest communications and that relationship we continue to build and putting yourself out there for students every day. I think it's more, uh, we're seeing more um, than just salary issues, it comes down to <coughs> more what the state is asking us to do in regards to mental health and and um, feeding and clothing and those types of things. So sincere thank you to each of you as you're here this evening and to those who couldn't make it this evening. Um, we appreciate what you do very much so. I'd like to thank all the teachers for coming tonight. I mean, that shows you care. I mean, you took time to put together the resolution, bring it to the board. And you know, we're going to do our part and work on it too. So we have our full support. Thank you for coming. Any other uh, comments from the board? Or anybody in the audience like to see? If not, we'll adjourn. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.